In this video, I moved on to part 090, numericalmethods.m, link to this document in the video description. And in this first video, we're going to see that MATLAB has the ability to do a whole bunch of symbolic manipulation. It has the ability to do a bunch of algebra for us. To do these algebraic manipulations, we're going to need to use the symbolics package. The basic vanilla version of MATLAB does not come with this package, so this may be some MATLAB code that you are not able to run. This code will not work in Octave unless you download the Symbolics package in Octave, which I'm going to demonstrate right now. So here we are in Octave, and when I go and try and run the first set of commands, you'll notice that I get this error right here, but there is this suggestion of how to fix it. Now it does say that I've already downloaded the Symbolics package, and I apologize for not recording that. I don't remember doing that, but in any case, the command that I need to run is pkg, load symbolic. PKG is just short for package. And I hit enter and there's no feedback that it gives me. And that's good when it's successful. There's no feedback. If there's a problem, there'll be an error or a warning. And then the code works. And then I'm able to run this symbolics code, which I'll demonstrate in more detail in MATLAB momentarily. Now, some of the output in Octave is formatted differently than it is in MATLAB, but it's working. I have not gone through and run all of this code in Octave, all the code that I'm going to show you in MATLAB, but I do believe that the vast majority of it works as long as you install and load in this symbolic package in Octave, which is totally free, by the way. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead with the rest of my MATLAB video, assuming that this now works for Octave users, as long as you load in that symbolic package. We're going to start off with how to create symbolic expressions in MATLAB. I'm going to go ahead and run this first section here. Do not be surprised if there is a delay between running your code and it showing any output, both in MATLAB and in Octave. For whatever reason, it seems like, especially the first time you run it, uh, it takes a moment to, I don't know, load in some data. I'm not sure exactly what it's doing, but it's a little slower than you might expect. The very first thing that we want to do is we want to declare our symbolic variables. We do that with the line SYMS in this case, blank space x. I'm declaring a single symbolic variable named x. Down below that, I'm going to declare a variety of symbolic variables, q, r, t, and k naught, and then below that, p, v, n, r, and temp, all just spaced out with spaces after the word sims. Sims is our MATLAB command. Now, what is a symbolic variable? Well, it's a lot more like a math class variable than the variables that we've been using so far, the programming variables. A programming variable is just a box with a label. It is a name that we use to refer to computer memory. In this case, x, for example, is just a placeholder for whatever value we might substitute in later on. And we will see examples of such substitutions in this video. In this expression on line 30 right here, I'm not doing any calculations. I am saving into a variable named y, a programming variable named y, the information of 2 times x plus 3 quantity squared divided by x squared plus 6x plus 9. I'm saving that information. It's as if I wrote down the algebraic expression on paper. And when I output the variable y, you see in the command window not a numeric value that results from that calculation, but the whole text, the, the whole text of the calculation itself. I'm literally saving into memory an algebraic expression without evaluating it, without calculating a result. And the same thing can be done with expressions using multiple variables, as I do here. And you can put in your regular MATLAB functions into these calculations, right? So if I want to raise e to the negative q divided by rt power, this is how I would write it out. And I'm not doing the calculation, I'm saving it into the variable named k. And the value in that is that then MATLAB can be used to manipulate these expressions in an algebraic fashion as you might be required to do in an algebra class. We can solve for certain values, we can simplify, we can rearrange things. And it's not just expressions. These are both expressions, but we can also put in equations. So on this line, I'm putting the equation p times v equals r times temp times n into the variable named ideal gas law. Ideal gas law is our programming variable, and we're putting an algebraic equation into it so that we could perform various manipulations on it or whatever, and we'll see more of that later. 
Ideal Gas Law is a box. The label or name on the box is Ideal Gas Law so that we can refer back to this information in memory. The information is a big whole equation. It's a little weird because we're more used to putting numeric values into a memory location. But as we see here with the symbolics package, we can also put in symbolic equations or expressions. It's very important that we're using the double equal sign here for equivalence as opposed to the single equal sign for assignment. The single equal sign is put. Put the information on the right side into the variable on the left. The double equal sign is more like mathematical equals. P times V is equivalent to R times temp times N. The blank spaces around it don't matter. You could have more or fewer of them. Although you cannot have a blank space between the two equal signs used in the equation on the right. You may wish to add in these spaces or even parentheses to emphasize what is the grouped up information on the right being put into the variable on the left. Continuing on down, a small but important point, do not separate your sims variables with commas. That is not correct. If you try and run this code, you will get an error. I know commas are usually fine, but in this case, it's not. The variables, the symbolic variables that you're declaring after sims should only be separated by spaces. Continuing on down, let's finally get into an example here. So I'm declaring a symbolic variable named x, and then I've got a symbolic expression that I'm putting into a variable named y. It's fairly complicated, this expression, two times quantity x plus three squared divided by this quadratic in the denominator. If I was asked to graph this, I might reach for my graphing calculator. However, I'm gonna run this built-in MATLAB command called simplify on y, and we're gonna see that things are actually a lot simpler than they would at first appear. So I ran the code here, and we see that the simplified form is just the number two. When I ran that simplify function, what happened was MATLAB multiplied out the numerator and found that, hey, when you square quantity x plus three, you actually get x squared plus six x plus nine. MATLAB then canceled, and all that was left over was two over one, which was just written out as two. Now for the mathematicians in the audience, it's worth noting that just because we eventually simplified it down to y equals two does not mean this is equivalent to the horizontal line at height two. Because originally we did have this more complex expression, we would want to say y equals two, except y is undefined at x equals negative three. But that's just a little statement for the mathematicians. Uh, we're seeing what the code does here in MATLAB. Although I'm also saying the code does not recognize the fact that y would be undefined at x equals negative three. The comment right here says to refer to the PowerPoint slides. I will link to the PowerPoint slides in the video description, but I actually think the PowerPoint is not that important. So I'm gonna move on from that and I'm gonna stick in the MATLAB code here. Here's another example of simplify. I'm gonna declare a symbolic variable. This time it's named A. And then beneath that, I've got a symbolic expression involving a that I'm saving into a variable named z. Now beneath that, I'm gonna run the simplify expression on z. When I initially set z equal to this expression involving a, there is a little bit of combination of like terms that's already taking place, right? We've got a plus two a, and then the negative is gonna be distributed into that uh, quadratic at the end there, and so there'll be some cancellation. But you see that like, like terms automatically get combined. However, the a minus three squared doesn't actually get squared out, doesn't get expanded. Not until I call the simplify on line 74 of my code. And so I set z equal to simplify z, run the simplify function there, and I get eight minus five a. So the a minus three squared gets expanded and all like terms get combined together into this simplified expression. Note, I have to set z equal to simplify z in order for the variable to update to the new information of eight minus five a. Otherwise, z is not altered. And that is always true of variables, right? If I don't set the variable equal to something, the variable is not changed. Moving on down, simplify also works on equations. Here I've got a symbolic variable x. I set a variable named w equal to this symbolic equation, the double equal sign there is indicating this is an equation here. The left side is equivalent to the right side. I put in some extra spaces just to indicate more clearly what is being put into the variable w. w is not involved in my equation on the right side. And then I set w equal to simplify w, and you can see in the command window the result of that, right? So on the right side, the two binomials got multiplied out, and like terms on both sides got combined. In MATLAB for Engineers 5th edition on page 446, there's a whole table of different 
MATLAB functions that can operate on symbolic equations and symbolic expressions, but I'm going to show you a few more here. I'm not going to be totally exhaustive about it. You can also find a bunch of this information online. Since I do highly approve of putting free educational information out there, you know, I approve of open source software like Octave and just myself putting these videos up on YouTube, there is a MATLAB textbook called Zero to MATLAB, which also has a complete section on the symbolics that are available in MATLAB. So I recommend checking that out, Zero to MATLAB. Continuing on down, the next function that we're going to look at is called numden. It's short for numerator denominator. And basically what you can do with this function is you can give a symbolic expression to the function and it can separate out for you just the numerator as a symbolic expression and just the denominator. So here I've got a variable named expression. It's got an x plus 3 over an x squared. And then I set numerator equal to numden, parentheses expression. Let me go ahead and run it. And the numerator variable will just have x plus 3 separated out. Scrolling down a little bit further, if you have two separate variables set equal to the numden function, the first one will capture the numerator and the second one will capture the denominator. You don't have to give them those names. I could just give them the names a and b if I wanted. And then I run it and the numerator will be put into the first variable, a in this case, and the denominator as a symbolic expression will be put into the variable named b. And then to emphasize that a and b are just symbolic expressions like any other, I can, for example, subtract them down here. I got to change these variable names to a and b. But if I just subtract them, I get a new symbolic expression. I don't know if you'd want to take your numerator and subtract your denominator, but I did it here. And so this that's displayed out, the negative x squared plus x plus 3, is my result of subtracting uh, the denominator from the numerator. Moving on down to another function here, we're going to look at expand. So I've got a symbolic variable, x again is what I'm using, and I have a variable named num, and I'm putting two times quantity x plus three squared into num, and then I'm gonna use the expand function to expand it out, to multiply out the x plus three squared. Expand not only squares the binomial, but also distributes the two to all the terms. One thing that I think is worth repeating is, expand parentheses num by itself does nothing you have to set some variable equal to expand parentheses num to get it, to capture the result. If I want to alter the original, the num that I had, I have to set num equal to expand parentheses num. For some reason, in this section in particular, students really get confused and think that, oh, I've simplified it just because I said simplify the expression or expand the expression or whatever. No, you've got to set a variable equal to it. Otherwise, that information is just discarded. Continuing further down here, factor is a function that is almost the opposite of expand. The one difference is that while expand returns as a result a single symbolic expression, factor is going to return a vector of symbolic expressions and each of those separate vector values is going to be its own symbolic expression. And you can see that the factor vector has two different values, x plus 6 and x minus 3. This variable factor vector does not contain numbers. It contains two different symbolic expressions. And you can have as many symbolic expressions as you want in a vector. Check out the workspace over here. So we've got four different variables. Each of them, note, has a different symbol, this like icon with a cube. And then the value is either one by one symbolic, or in the case of the vector, one by two symbolic. It's different from what you would normally see when you're just working with numbers. I can index into factor vector the way I would any other vector. Factor vector parentheses one for the first item, factor vector parentheses two for the second item. And here I'm gonna multiply them back together to show you that it's like I just got back to the original. Now, when I multiply them together, it doesn't actually perform the multiplication, it just saves it symbolically. But then I run the expand function and I'm right back where I started. So you see sort of that inverse relationship between factor and expand. Next up is the poly to sim function. So this function takes as input a vector of numbers and it gives you as a result a symbolic expression of a polynomial. So here I've got vect with values 4, negative 1, 0, 2, and 4. And those, when I pass those into the poly to sim function, become the coefficients on a polynomial. So this result variable is going to then contain 4x to the fourth minus x cubed plus 2x plus 4. Notice that there is not an x squared term. That's because one of the coefficients is 0. 
So by putting that zero in there, well, there's a placeholder for it, for the x squared, but zero x squared, it's not gonna be displayed out. And there's another function, sim to poly, that's basically gonna do the exact opposite. So sim to poly, its input, in this case, the variable named result, is going to be a symbolic function, needs to be a polynomial, and the result given back will be a vector of numbers. Does sim to poly work with variables other than x? Yes, it does. So here's my output here. 5 times z to the 5th minus 2z cubed plus 9. There's a bunch of zeros in here, right? There's no z to the 4th term. There's no z squared. There's no z. So those are just going to be zeros. Now, could you use this with more than one variable? Uh, I don't think so. I haven't actually tried it. But at that point, you don't really have a polynomial, right? Well, you know what? Let's just actually try it out right here. Might as well be curious. So I'll put in an a and a b and run it and see what happens. Okay, yeah. So that just simply does not work. Poly to sim, only going to work with one variable. That's going to wrap us up for this video. Next video is going to be very important as well. I'm going to continue with symbolic expressions and equations, and we're going to see the built-in solve function and substitution functions. So very common things that you would want to do in an algebra class, and we will see those in the next video.